Are you spending hours entering data or trying to keep track of your students' grades manually? What if I told you that Excel can save you time, reduce errors, and help you to stay organized without all the stress? Well, in today's episode, we are unlocking the secrets of Excel, including formulas that you can use, features that are really helpful for teachers when you're managing class data. So stick around, learn how to automate your grading, and I'll be giving away a free template in this episode as well. Hey there, teachers. Welcome to Miss Estric teach and tell the podcast where every week i dive into all the tips and tricks that make teaching life so much easier whether you're a veteran educator an early career teacher learning the ropes or balancing the classroom with being a busy parent this will help you streamline your workload and bring a bit more balance to your life you bring the coffee and i'll bring the teach and tell hey everyone and welcome to miss estric teach and tell the podcast where teaching meets efficiency whether you're in the classroom on the go or at home preparing lessons i've got tips to streamline your teaching, boost productivity and help you excel, which leads us into today's episode, which is all about Excel. But before we jump straight into how we can use Excel and me showing you, time for a quick coffee catch up. Today I've gone for a nice hot cup of tea because I'm feeling a bit ill. I've already had my medicine to keep me going through the recording of this podcast. But in terms of what I've been up to this week, it's been a busy one in terms of prepping resources. So I've been working with my team to create the AQA a-level practical booklet so that should be launched soon for students although it'd work well for teachers as well if they want to use it with them students so i've been busy checking that proofing it and just getting everything ready to go so keep a look out for that resource because i'll be sharing it with students but i think it probably will be quite helpful for teachers as well so i'll make sure i share that on my other page as well miss estric teach and tell as well as miss estric biology right let's jump into it then the main content excel for teachers and i'm going to be going through five key uses that I've always used. Well, I say always, more so in recent years. And since I discovered it, I always use them to really help with tracking data, analyzing data, particularly as a head of department. So I doubt many people are recording their class data down manually anymore. I mean, you might do homework sometimes in your teacher planner at the back. I mean, I used to do everything in there, but nowadays most people are putting everything straight onto Excel and maybe we've got a separate program that does it as well. But I'm gonna be going through, as I said, five ways to use Excel to make Make data analysis so much easier and efficient. So we're going to go through this scenario here. I'm actually going to show you what I'm doing as I'm talking through. So you can see the spreadsheet here where I've got only a very small amount of mock data. And when I say mock, I mean like fake data, not mock exam data. So I've got student names. I've got Alice, Bob, Charlie, Daisy, Edward, Fiona, George, completely made up, obviously. I've got the mark that they've got for a made up test and I've got made up target grades. So for your class, this could be a start point student name mark you've got for a particular test target grades and then we've got a space there for the grade they've got in the test and for any feedback or notes so the sorts of things I might add in there are whether the student did the test late or not and whether they had extra time that sort of thing so there's our class data the first thing then that I'm going to show you is how you can use VLOOKUP to automatically generate the grade that those marks would be worth so that you don't have to manually type in and work out for this mark what grade that would be. So watch along as I do this. The first thing you actually need to do is make a second little table on the side where you put what the grade boundaries are. So for this one, I've got the lower boundaries and then the upper boundaries and then the grade. So for example, to get a grade four, that would be any mark between 30 and 39. And to get a grade five, that would be any mark between 40 and 49 and so on. So you do need to create that as a separate table just to state what the grade boundaries are. Then I'm going to click on column C, which is where I have the empty column currently for the grades. And I'm clicking on cell C2. And then in the function, the FX bar at the top, if you do an equal sign and then write V lookup, you get it in the drop down menu. And then what we need to do is enter the formula. Now, for me, the first part of the formula is B2. And what that means is that is what the 
formula needs to look at to determine the grade. So I want them to look at the mark, which is in B2, to then determine the grade. Then I've done a comma and I've got dollar sign G, dollar sign T, uh, colon, dollar sign I, dollar sign seven. What that means is that is the data table for the grade boundaries. So the G2 is the first cell of the table and the I7 is saying the furthest right and bottom. So it's basically outlining the entire table, so all of that data. Then we've got a comma, and I've got the number three. What that three means is which column of the table that I just gave them is the column with the grades in. And for me, it's the third column because the first column is lower boundary. The second column is upper boundary. The third column for me is the grade. So depending on which way you round you've done it, you might have put the grades at the start. And in that case, you put number one for that bit. And then the last thing is you've got to put either true or false. False, if you put that, it means that a particular mark will equal or an exact number always equals an exact grade, which isn't going to apply for us because that would mean you'd have to literally get bang on 52 to equal a particular grade but we've actually got a range which would fall under the true for closest match so that's why I'm then going to put true at the end then if we press enter we can see for Alice she got 52 marks that falls in the range of 50 to 59 which is a grade six so it's automatically giving me grade six I can then select that square in the bottom right corner of the cell drag it all the way down and now all the grades are changed for those students. So the advantage of using VLOOKUP, I find is, was actually a few. First of all, it's going to automatically, once you put in that formula and applied it to all the cells in that column, automatically work out the grade. So save you time, so you're not having to work it out and potentially making mistakes. The second reason I find it helpful is, if for whatever reason the student's mark changes, maybe you remark a question and it goes up or it goes down, then it will automatically, once you've changed the mark in the B column for mark, it will automatically automatically change the grade. If you alter the grade boundaries at all, you just need to change it in your grade boundaries table and then it will automatically update all the grades as well. So you don't have to go through every single grade changing it, just change the grade boundaries table and it will all be done for you. So that's why I love the VLOOKUP function. Number two linked to this is we often find it helpful to get an idea of how the whole year group is done, particularly if it's like GCSE mock exams or A-level mock exams. And we want to know how many students got a particular grade to see if that profile fits what we've got in previous years for the mocks and therefore to give us an idea are, is that cohort on track to perform the same as similar years? And that's where we can use the count if formula. So again, let me show you how to do this. Now I have realized that I keep saying, let me show you. If you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, this episode, I do highly recommend that you watch it on the YouTube channel instead. It's Miss Estrick T and tell YouTube exactly the same podcast every week it's just you get video footage and you get screen recordings and for this Excel one I think having the screen recording is invaluable because otherwise you just hear me say a load of numbers and formula and it probably doesn't make a lot of sense so count if if we then have a look I've created another table where I've got grade as one column heading and count as the other and in brackets I just put how many have this grade so that if you do download this template you know what we're counting so I've written all the possible grades they could have got. And then if you click on the cell for me, which is H12, this is where I put the count if formula in. So again, because we're putting in a formula, we would put in equals, or you can click the FX bar at the top and do equals and start typing count if and it'll appear in the drop down menu. So what we then need to do for the count if is put in the data for the particular column where the grades are, because we want to count from that column how many students got a grade nine? And then from that column, how many got a grade seven, eight, and so on. So I've done count if brackets, dollar sign C, because it's the C column for me, then dollar sign two, because that is the first cell with a grade in it. Then I've done a colon, and then it goes to the bottom of that column. So it's dollar sign C, dollar sign eight, which indicates that's the bottom of that column. Then I've done a comma and written the number nine, close brackets. And then if I press enter, we can see it tells me that there was one count of grade nines. And if I have a look, that is correct. There's only one student that got a grade nine. Now I'm actually going to drag that formula down for all of the cells and just edit each one. So now if I click the next one down, I'll delete where I wrote 
nine for grade nine and instead put eight so it'll count how many grade eights. The next one down I'll then put a seven to count how many grade sevens. Same for the six, five and four. Now for this one obviously I don't really need that because it's such a small table but if you're doing this for a whole cohort so for example I used to have about 100 students, 120 sometimes doing A-level biology. So instead of me having to count how many of them got an A star, for GCSE we actually had 180 students so if we wanted to count for the mocks how many got a particular grade manually counting that would take so long whereas doing this count if it's so much quicker gives you a bit of a profile to see how the cohort has performed have you got the number of grade sevens you are expecting and so on and you could actually do this for your target grade column as well and then see the number of students that got a particular grade does that match the number of students with that target grade now obviously it doesn't tell you if it's the correct students with that target but it's a, an approximate way you could always see is the target grades lining up with the actual grades to give you a bit of an idea for a mock exam are you on track for your alps data which i realize isn't the be all and end all it's obviously more important how each individual student is performing but we do have to look at alps data or at least i used to have to look at alps data and it was useful to be able to get an idea along the way to see are there any particular cohorts of students within the year to maybe focus more attention on or to create some resources on number three on the list is one that I think probably basically everyone knows how to do if they are familiar with Excel and that is working out the average. So I've got my average at the bottom of the mark column but you might want to know the average grade as well. So to work out the average you would do your equal sign, start typing in average, select it from the drop down menu and then you're just entering the cells that you want to be included to calculate the average. So for me the first cell of data is B2 and that goes all the way down to B8 and we're separating those with a colon. Press enter and you've got your average. So for me the average mark on this fake set of data was 58. If I actually want to drag that across to then see what is the average grade just click the square at the bottom when you're highlighting the cell, drag it over and it'll now work out the formula of that next column and for us the average grade was a 6 on this set of data. Now I do use that but I don't always use it every time because I find sometimes the students I would teach would rely too heavily on what's the class average and they just wanted to know had they reached or exceeded the average as a measure of have they done well and I used to try and emphasize to the students you shouldn't be comparing yourself to the class average though you should be comparing yourself to how you performed in your previous test because what we're interested in is are you making progress not how do you compare to the year group which is obviously difficult for them to take on board because they want to get an idea though of well yes have I improved fine but how do I compare to everyone else but that can lead to a whole range of different issues but for you as a teacher you might be interested how all of your classes are doing is there a particular class that has a lower class average is there a reason for that that maybe you're able to address maybe you're not because it sets who knows but it's a feature that might be helpful okay next on the list is pivot tables which actually if I'm honest I haven't used these it was something that we were shown in a training session and I'm thinking now it probably would have been quite helpful because I could have used a pivot table instead of this count if that I've got and then put it on a different tab of this spreadsheet so it is neater. So let's just go through how you could do a pivot table. So first of all you would need to select your data and then go to insert at the top of the options and then the first one for me is pivot table. So I then click pivot table and what I'd then need to do is if you've already selected your data so for me I'm selecting all of the table so going from A1 to E8 then I'm clicking pivot table then a pop-up comes up which just confirms the data selection area and I'm going to click OK and that I want it in a new worksheet so that's like a tab and then the page that we get is blank but on the right hand side it says pivot table fields and this is where you can select what you would have as your rows and the values in those rows to create a new table from the existing data from the previous page so for example I could select the option grade and I'm going to drag that into rows and then for the values I would put student names 
And what I then get is this table, which if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see where it says the row labels, which I'm actually gonna change that heading to say grades because the row labels is grades. We've got grades four all the way to nine. And then it says count of student name. I'd probably change that as well to how many have this grade. And then it tells you how many students have that grade. And you've got the grand total, which actually is sometimes useful to make sure has every student taken the test? Has anyone missed it? We've not realized. So that's how you could, instead of having your count if table on the same page as all of your original data, you can have a separate tab just to keep it a bit neater. And then the last thing you could be looking at is conditional formatting, which is when you automatically get these color codes of the cells. Okay, so with the conditional formatting, what I have done as an example is you could highlight all the data in your column. So for me, I've highlighted all of the marks and then I'm clicking conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and I'm gonna go for greater than because I want to see how many students have got a mark greater than the class average. So I've changed it to format with green fill with dark green text because I'm seeing green as a positive and if they've got over the class average, that's a positive. Then you have a cell that is flashing for you to input which cell are we comparing to? So that's the class average, which is for me is 58. And I'm gonna press okay. And we can then see automatically, we have got Bob, Daisy, Fiona and George have all turned green because they have got a mark greater than the class average. Or you could have done this the other way around. Maybe you could have it red if it was less than the class average and so on. So that's one way you could use conditional formatting just to visually get a little bit more information in terms of your data analysis. So there we have it. There's five ways you could use Excel to speed up your data analysis when it comes to class tests or mocks and to help you with your data analysis as well. So the quick win of the week this week then is try one of these. I would recommend pick one assignment that you have to mark this week, whether it's a piece of homework or a class test, or it might be a mock. And when you put it into your spreadsheet, if you don't already use VLOOKUP, have a go at using VLOOKUP to automatically calculate these grades and see what you think. If you like it, then go on to try and do this with all of your upcoming tests. Depending on your skill level with Excel, you might want to try one of these at a time. If you're more experienced and you can try maybe a range of these, you might have known all of these already, who knows? If you did know all of these already and you've got another little tip that you want to share, then I would love to know. So please share it with me on Instagram and I will then share it with everyone else as well. So the resource roundup of the week, that spreadsheet that I've been showing showing you on YouTube as I went, you can download and have that template for free with all of those formulas already embedded within it. So then you would just need to add your own data and maybe reposition some of the cells. So if you do want that, it's linked in the show notes. So you've got that to help you. So that is it for today, looking at how you can use Excel to speed up your data analysis. Hopefully you'll feel more in control of your class data and grading, especially if you do have any role within your school where you are in charge of of tracking data. Make sure if you did find this helpful that you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest podcasts. And if you do need to watch that walkthrough again, when you've got the template, then don't forget it's over on YouTube if you're not watching it there already. So that is it for this week. I'll see you next time. You bring the coffee and I'll bring the teaching towels.